In this video, I will talk about functions, what they are and how to use them. Let's take a look at the outline. First, I'll explain what is a function and how to look at them. In this section, I'll give you some useful perspectives on how to look at functions so you can better understand them. Secondly, I'll explain how to write a function. I'll give you many examples and I'll show you the right things and the wrong things to do when making a function. Finally, I'll briefly touch upon when to create a function because you don't always need to create a function. Now, if you want to go along with me, I recommend you to have installed Node.js and Visual Studio Code. If you've done so, let's get started. First, what is a function? Well, take a look at this. This is a function. We have all the necessary ingredients that you can see here. It's a simple one, but it's all we need. If you look at the bottom side, we see here a function execution. This is where the real magic happens. Now, if you don't understand what this means, don't worry, we'll get to it. I'll first give you a couple of useful perspectives. Let's take a look at number one, the black box. Now imagine this, let's say you're hungry and you feel like eating a sandwich. Now for that, you need a couple of ingredients. You know, we've got lettuce, cheese, tomato, bread, all you need to make the sandwich. And hopefully in the end, you can make the sandwich. But in order to get from the ingredients to the end product, you need to go through some process. You need to do certain things. This is what a function is. That whole process of getting some inputs and then providing some outputs, that is what a function does. So essentially, very simply put, it's input, which is the ingredients, and then the black box, which is manipulating the input. So we don't know exactly what it's doing at the moment, but there's something happening with the input so that eventually it creates this output. Now as developers, it's up to us to define what is going to be in the black box. So we are going to write logical rules that will help us manipulate the input. Let's take a look at another perspective. Perspective number two. The tool. A function is a tool. Let's first take a look at this example here. You can see here a nail in the wall, but it's not completely in there. Now, I really want to put the nail in the wall, but how do I best do that? Well, I could use my hands, but that's quite painful. So I choose to use a tool. Now, if you look here on the right, you can see three different tools you could use. You know, pencil, scissors, and a hammer. Which one do you think is the right tool for the job? Well, obviously it's the hammer, right? So in order to make sure that the nail can get into the wall in the most effective way, we're gonna use the hammer. Now in the JavaScript world, there's many different functions out there, either functions that you have created or functions that other people have. And each function is meant to do a certain job. It's meant to solve a certain problem. And that's also how you should look at functions. They are tools you can use to do a certain job. So if you take a look at this perspective in the previous one, you might come to the following conclusion. A function is a reusable solution. I'll go back to the black box. If you take a look at this, at this function here, you see that we receive a certain input to create a certain output. We get ingredients to create a sandwich. Now, this is a solution to making a sandwich. You know, I want to use all these ingredients so that I can eat eventually something nice. That's what the function does. So it's a solution to my problem of being hungry. Secondly, it's also reusable. 
because anytime that I put certain inputs in this function, I get a certain output, the output that I expect. I always want to go through this process knowing that I will eventually end up with a sandwich. So if I give similar inputs, let's say I remove the cheese and I put fish in there or beef or something else, then I can still end up with some kind of sandwich. So this function, which we would call make sandwich or something, would be reusable and would also be a solution because it it solves the problem of me being hungry and wanting to have a sandwich. If we take a look at the other metaphor, we have here the wall and the nail. Well, this is a problem that can occur many times. You always want to hammer stuff in the wall. So for that, we can use a hammer. A hammer is reusable because each time you use it, you know, you can still use it. It doesn't break. And you can also use it for multiple purposes. So you can use it for the nails, but maybe also for something else that you want to hammer in. It's also a solution because it allows us to solve a certain problem. You know, if something sticks out, we want to hammer it in, then we can use the hammer. So a function is a reusable solution. Now let's take a look at how it looks in code. How to write it. Before we do so, we first have to check out what a function consists of. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of theory and then we just jump into the code. A function consists of a couple of things. First of all, a function name. What is the function called? How can you refer to it? Then we have parameters. So these are the inputs, like we just saw previously here. So we've got here the function name, we've got here the parameters or the inputs. Then we have the logic. So logic is a very vague term but it's something that developers use all the time. Essentially, it means all the logical rules that you have to write that will manipulate the input to create a certain output. That's logic. If you take a look at this here, there's not very much logic. It's basically what you see here, num1 plus num2. That's the whole operation. Then finally, we have the return keyword. So let's say I want to, again, use this function here. And I want to make a sandwich. Now, let's say that I want to make a sandwich, but I don't feel like doing it myself. So I'm going to ask my friend, hey, can you make me a sandwich? I just bought all these ingredients and I would like you to make it and then give me the sandwich. Now you give your friend all these ingredients and then they start working on making the sandwich. And then hopefully by the end of it, your friend returns to you with that sandwich. That's the purpose of the return keywords. You execute the function in a certain position. And then at the end of it, you want to return the end result, the output. So those are the essential parts of a function. Now let's take a look at some real code. First, we're going to look at the different types of functions. There's basically two types. We have here the ES5, also known as the named function. And we have here the ES6, or also known as the anonymous, or the arrow function. Both of these are what's called a function definition or a function declaration. We're basically defining the function. We're bringing it to life. I just mentioned to you all the necessary ingredients we need for a function. So we have the name, we have the parameter, we have the return keywords, and that's pretty much it. Now, there's a little bit of a difference between these two functions. So here in the ES5 version, we also have a function keyword. And this keyword, tells the compiler 
so the program that reads the code, that what is going to follow is a function definition. Now you don't necessarily need it. And that's what you will find in the second part. Here we have an anonymous function and we don't have the function keyword. Now it still works essentially the same way. Only in the case of the anonymous function, we store it inside of a variable so that we can still refer to it and execute it somewhere else in the code. Let's take a look at another example. The function that we just saw. Again, and we have here the function keywords to specify that this function is going to be defined. Then we have the name of the function, add numbers. We've got two parameters. And I'll give you a little note on the parameters. So in functions, we want to always have different inputs. This is what makes a function reusable. Now, a parameter is essentially a placeholder so that whenever we're inside of the function body, which is this, we can then refer to the placeholder, which eventually will be replaced by the actual input. And so here we can then manipulate it. In this case, all we do is we log the end result of this operation to the console and then also return the end result to the place where it's called, where it's executed. Let's take a look at it in the terminal. So what I want to do is I want to execute this. So I'm going to use node to make that happen. Node, I'm gonna to go to 2.js, execute, and I can see here the result, eight. Now this result comes from this line here, line number three, console.log. Now console.log is not the same thing as return. While they both essentially print out a value, you know, they produce a value, in the in the line number three console.log, we log or we show the end result of this to the console. And the console is in this case, what you can see here, my command line. Return merely brings the value back here. So let's say that I execute this function, then once it has been executed, after it has been done, it will be replaced by the number eight, because that's the end result of this operation. So then you would remove this, you know, when the computer reads it, it would replace the function execution by the actual value. Let's go back. Okay, now I want to give you a little bit of a note on the naming of the function because this is quite important. I'll go back to my slides here and I'll show you about how to name. Now, a big part of development kind of goes unspoken. You know, so you learn about the language, you learn about the technology, but there are certain things that are just recommended to do. Namely, the way that you define your function names. Now, let's take a look at the first one. It should be a camel case. Now, this is a way of writing function names. It basically means the first word starts with a small letter, and then the second word or the words after, they start with a capital letter. So a good function name, for example, could be create element camel case. It should also include a verb. So a function, as you may have noticed, is actually an active process. It's an action, it does something. So you want it to include a verb. For example, add numbers. This is very important because you want to distinguish your function names from a variable, for example. You know, a variable you can call anything, but a function, just by the fact that it includes a verb, you will automatically know just by reading it that it's a function, that you can do something with it. And that's very important. And then finally, a function name should also only include letters. 
while you could technically also use you know a number something like that it's just not recommended it's not nice it's not clean it's not really meaningful so you want to give it a name for the action it does for exactly what it does so if you look here on the left side you can see different good and bad examples you know so for example in the first case the bad example you don't follow the camel case rule so this is a bad function name but in the second one it's good you know paint screen camel case in the second bad example you can see that it's all small letters and it also doesn't mean anything but in a good example you can see that we have a verb here and also what it's supposed to do so with this function apparently you can insert numbers so that's already very, very meaningful then finally we have here the function name breaking the rule of including only letters so this doesn't mean anything I mean, it could be some kind of weird code language, but you know, if you understand it, that does not mean that somebody else will understand it. So a better name could be, for example, fetch data. Again, camel case. Again, active. It has a verb and it's meaningful. Okay. So now, there's another thing that you should know. Let's take a look at this. Okay, namely some examples of how there are different functions. So um, there's basically two types of functions. One type is the ones that you write to, to perform a certain operation. And there's also functions that other people have defined and written for you that you can use. What I'm showing you right now are all functions that I've written myself to do a certain thing. And notice that I'm following the convention of the names. So I've got here say hi, it's a verb, a camel case, and also here is a string. In the first case, all this function does is it logs to the console hi, and then it returns true. I always want to return something. So even if I call or execute this function, if I get back true, I know that what has happened, that it worked. In the second function, is string, I'm essentially just checking out the arguments. And I notice now that this is the first time that I'm mentioning that word. When you uh, heard me talking about parameters, as we can see here, we are essentially talking about the placeholders. So we're talking about num1 and num2. But the moment that you execute a function, the values you pass to the function that you put inside of the parentheses, those are called arguments. So sometimes in the industry, we use both terms interchangeably. So people will always say arguments instead of parameters. So while you could still use it in the correct way, like that, there is a distinction and it's good for you to know. So we've got parameter here, num1, num2, and argument number two, argument number five. So that's a good distinction for you to have. Cool. So let's go back. A function is string. It basically just checks out to see if the argument that you get is of the type string. And then we return the end result of that operation. So if it is of the type string, we get true. If it's not, we get false. And this is a good check. So for example, the naming, if I look at it, could also be check if string. For example, it would still follow the conventions. It would still be meaningful. I would still understand what to do with this. I'm just going to turn it back because it's nice and short, but that's a good rule of thumb. Now let's execute what I just did here. Cool. Now let's take a look at the first function, say hi. 
As you can see here, I've got zero parameters and that's totally fine. A function can have parameters, but it doesn't have to. It can also just be used to do something. And that's it. For example, to log to the console high. And as you can see here in the console, that's what we get. In the second case is string. We perform this operation. Is it of the type of the data type string or not? And as we can see here, at the first function execution, the case is true. It is a string. And in the second, it's not true because it's actually a number. And so at the moment, it might not seem totally clear for you why this is useful. Just know that it's important to have functions like this because this will be used for something else at a later stage in the program. Okay, great. So I hope that by now you're not overloaded with information. I'm trying to give you the best about uh, what I know about functions. Um, but we're not done yet, so bear with me a little bit. Like I mentioned, so you've got two functions, the ones that I write, that you write, but also the functions that other people write. Now, ideally, you want to always write reusable solutions, like I mentioned here. And once a function has been defined and it's reusable, everybody can use it. And that's a beautiful thing about the developer community. Everybody always writes things in such a way where other people can also use it. So you name it in such a way that it's readable, that other people can understand it. You um, write it in such a way where it's very simple and very clear cut to what it does. And then others can use it. Let's take a look at some examples of other people's functions. So there's quite some. And I've just given you some examples here. If you go to your browser or if you go to uh, your command line, you might be able to use some of these functions here. Let me give you an example, for example, in the browser. I'll go to Google. And what I will do is I will show you these functions. So I have not defined these functions myself. They were defined by somebody else, but made accessible to me through a certain way. Now, in order to know how to use this function, I have to, of course, look it up because some people have written a man manual for it. I would go here, JavaScript function, and then I can take a look at where it comes from and go to the first link. And as you can see here, the map function comes from array in the end. So it's an object. Now, I don't want to go too deep into that. Just know that array is something that's available within the browser, within the console. So if I type in here array, press enter, you can see that it's a function. And let's say I type in array dot, let's see here, dot map. You can also see here, I can access it. So I can use the map function at any given moment. Now, I can also just get it from an array here. Same thing. Because actually, what you can see here, this array is the same thing as saying this. That might have been a little bit too detailed for you, so I'm not gonna go too deep into that, but just know that there's a lot of functions out there that you can use and that they have been made accessible for you through some certain way. As I have defined here, they are either defined, these functions are either defined within the environment, so it could be the window object, which is found in the browser here, the window, or it could also be node itself, as you have seen here. So um, that's one way to find these predefined functions. And the other one is the data structure. So if I go to string or to array, like I just showed you, you can also access them, right? Here, array or string, those, those are also functions. And then you can look deeper into them and find other functions you can also use. 
So that's great. Reusable solutions, not having to write everything yourself, great. Okay, let's take a look at my final part. So this is more about when to create a function. And I'm going to look at my slide here. Let's see. Okay, when to create a function. Great. So functions are created anytime you want to reuse a block of code that manipulates your data somehow. So let's take a look, look at an example. Take a look at this file here. You can see here I've defined a variable, an array of strings, and I've called it fruits. And then I have defined a loop. Now, if I execute this file, then we will see what the result is. Let me check it out. If we read this code, we basically see that this for loop, it checks to see if within the array, if there's a string with the word banana. And if that's the case, we print out this to the console. If that's not the case, we show this. And as you can see here in my command line, I have first not a banana, then this is a banana because there is a banana here in the second position, and then also not a banana. Great. So this is something that maybe I want to do another time, but with a different array. Now, I cannot do that in the current format. In the way that it's set up right now, I can only ever execute this once. So it's not reusable at all. So instead, what I can do is I can wrap this inside of a function, which I'll do here. I'm going to say function, and then I'm going to give the function a meaningful name. So what could be a meaningful name for this function here? Well, we have to take a look at what it's going to do. And what it's going to do is it's going to check to see if there's a banana inside of the array. That's basically it. So how about we call it check banana? We're going to give it one parameter, which is going to be an array of fruits. I can call it fruit R, short for fruits array. And then I'm going to put it here. Great. Now, at the moment, it doesn't work yet because I first need to do something with this parameter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the parameter with all the parts where we're going to access or refer to fruits. So now, anytime that I use this function, this parameter will be filled in by an input, which could be fruits in this case. So let's check it out. I'm going to execute this here. I'm going to give it as an input fruits, this fruits variable, this array. And here's what's going to happen. I'm going to execute this fruits. Uh, oh, sorry. Aha. I see now that I'm already making a mistake here. Look at this. This is how it should be. We're taking the name of the function and we are executing that function using parentheses. We're giving it an argument, and that argument is going to replace the parameter, which, like I mentioned, is the placeholder. So we're going to put fruits here, and it's going to be here, and it's also going to be here. When I execute check banana, what happens is that we get the input, Let's call it fruits again. And then fruits, this one, will go here also, and then also here. So now this fruits refers to this one. I'm gonna turn it back here. Great. Okay, then let's go step by step. We have the fruits array, which is this. We're going to go into a for loop. What we're going to do is we're going to check through the 
positions within the array for as long as the array uh, counts. So it has three positions. And then inside, we're going to check to see if the fruit that we are looking at at that moment, at that index position, if it equals banana. If that's the case, then we're going to console or we're going to lock to the console this. And if that's not the case, we're going to lock to the console this. Let's try it out. And go here again. Okay, so there's no difference. As you can see here, I still have the same result. So it's still the same thing. And obviously this makes sense because it's the same input. Let's say I want to change the input. So I'm going to use check banana again. And I've defined here a different, different variable. I'm going to give it no, the argument. And then I'm going to just disable this one so we can only get the results from this one. I'm going to clear my command line. And then node for JS. And look at this. It still works, only in a slightly different way. And the reason why is because also the input is slightly different. But the operation still works. The operation of looping through the array and then checking to see what's inside of the array. That still works. So check banana is now a reusable solution. It's reusable because I can give it different inputs and it will still output a similar thing. And it's a solution because what if I want to check banana inside of an array? Yeah, if that's my problem, and I will have that problem many times, um, then I can use this function. So that's perfect. Okay, so this is my central message. When you are writing a function, you want to write it in such a way where you can reuse it. It serves as a hammer, like I mentioned before in my example here. You know, there's always going to be nails that need to be hammered in the wall. So for that, we need to make a hammer that works perfectly to solve that problem. It's the same thing here. We're writing the logical rules needed to transform all these ingredients to make that sandwich. So that's the reusable solution. We give it similar inputs and we want to output similar things. So that's in a nutshell what a function is.